Hey guys, it's Lily Away, and welcome back to Through the Parks. So today we're going to be covering another desert type national park. Um, not necessarily a desert, but it's kind of similar to one. We're going to be covering um, Arches National Park. Um, if you don't know, Arches is a very beautiful national park, and its name kind of gives away on why it is really popular uh, due to the arches that form in the park. We're going to get in more into it, um, obviously, but I just wanted to start off with that's the park we're covering for today. <laughs> that's the park we're going to be covering. I do have some uh, stuff I want to update you guys on, just little things. Uh, Through the Parks is going to continue updating as usual throughout the next coming months and into the new year. I do have some plans for a new series. It won't be a podcast. I'll probably actually record some stuff for that one. Um, but I am planning on starting a new series. Currently, the name we've decided on is called um, The Tragic Thicket. I have, if you don't know, I have two models I use. I have this one that is used for Through the Parks. And I have another one that I haven't had really any plans on using yet, but I think I've decided that for the Tragic Thicket, that model will be the face of the Tragic Thicket. Tragic Thicket is basically uh, the Tragic Thicket. I just realized I'm going to stumble upon that so many times now. Anyways, that is going to cover um, any like scary stories, cryptids, uh, basically anything like horror related that I enjoy and want to talk about. Um, it's not going to be like a podcast, so I'm definitely going to put a little bit more work into it <laughs> um, to like make videos and stuff like that. But I have not decided what the first episode for that one's going to be, but just know that that is in the works and I am planning on that one. So if you if you enjoyed my ARG type stuff, just know that through uh, the tragic thicket is going to be similar to that. Um, I do want to cover some more ARGs, I just haven't picked one yet. Um, and yeah, that's about as much as I wanted to update you before this gets really long. We're going to start off, as always, with our overall info on Arches National Park. So, let's get started. So, Arches National Park is located in eastern Utah. It is adjacent to the Colorado River, and it is four miles north of a town called Moab, Moab Utah. The park contains the highest density of natural arches in the world, with roughly 2,000 sand, sandstone arches, ones including the delicate arch and many other unique geological resources and formations. The park contains 76,680 acres of high desert on the Colorado Plateau, with its highest elevation, elevation being at 5,653 feet, which is located at Elephant Butte, and the lowest elevation uh, at 4,085 feet at the Visitor Center. The park receives an average of 10 inches of rain or less annually, and it was originally a national monument uh, that was designated on April 12, 1929. However, on November 12, 1971, it was redesignated a national park. In 2021, the park received more than 1.8 million visitors. And from April 1st to October 31st, 2023, so the time has already passed, uh, but I thought this was interesting and I kept it in here, a timed entry reservation was required if you wanted to enter the park between the times of 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, like one of the other parks, I can't remember exactly right now, it did have a park purpose. Um, I will read that to you now, basically just stating on what is the purpose of protecting this park and why are we doing it. So, the purpose of Arches National Park is to protect extraordinary examples of geological features including arches, natural bridges, windows, spires, and balanced rocks, as well as other features of geological, historic, and scientific interest and to provide opportunities to experience these resources and their associated values in their majestic natural settings. That is basically just the park purpose. Um, it's just kind of, you know, why does the park exist? What exactly are we protecting in the park? Uh, what do we expect to get out of the park? Um, we're going to move into the geology, which yet again, like always, there's definitely more geology out there. If you're interested in the, uh, learning more about the geology in the park, you can definitely look that up. This is just going to be the basic stuff that I understood and think that uh, is important to know. So, the park lies above an underground evaporated layer of a salt bed, uh, or it is called a salt bed, which is what usually causes the formation of the arches, spires, balanced rocks, sandstone, fins, and eroded monoliths. The salt bed was deposited in the Paradox Basin of the Colorado Plateau 300 million years ago and eventually evaporated. 
The arches of the area are developed mostly in the Entrada Formation, and the weight of the cover caused the salt to liquefy underneath uh, and thrust up into what is called salt domes. Um, they also formed unusual uh, salt anticlines or linear uplifts. Uh, in the park, some sections of rocks subside into the areas between the domes. One displacement, displacement uh, which is 2,500 feet, is the Moab Fault and can be seen by the visitor center. And the major formations visible in the park today are what are the uh, they're the salmon-colored Entrada sandstone, which forms most of the arcs, along with the buff-colored Nahavo sandstone. Eventually, erosion would uh, break bits and pieces off of the walls, which would then eventually, you know, a series would form a series of freestanding fins that would remain. Wind would eventually continue to erode these fins until they became what is known as the famous arches. We get a little bit more into that uh, in the next section, but that's kind of how the arches were formed. Uh, the park's terrain is ex uh, is considered extremely fragile, although it is it seems like it's full of just rocks. Uh, it is a very extra it is eh, it is a very fragile park. Uh, it has more than one million visitors that tend to threaten the high desert ecosystem. Some of the factors that make it very sensitive include that it is basically it's a semi-arid region. It is very scarce and unpredictable rainfall and uh, has a lack of deep freezing, lack of plant litter, and a ton of foot traffic due to all the visitors. Now we get into the arch formations of the National Park. This is where we talk about like technically how they actually are formed, the very specifics. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. It just covers more on the specifics of the arches. So the arches formed due to basically many layers would combine, like press down and combine together. Uh, and then eventually the rock would erode away um, and eventually form what is called fins. Many of those rocks would have what is considered weaker layers at the bottom and stronger layers at the top. These weaker layers would eventually fall away and would form your arches. Um, all the park park's arches are made of what is called Entrada sandstone. However, there are very slight differences in how each one is developed. There are three different uh, ways or members that uh, it can be developed. You have your slick rock members, dewy rock members, and MOBA members. So vertical arches are developed from slick rock members, or a combo of slick rock members and MOBA members, or slick rock members that rest above dewy members. So there are three ways vertical arches can be made. Horizontal arches are formed whenever a vertical pothole uh, meets a horizontal cave. Uh, and then obviously the erosion in the park still continues and eventually all of the acres, uh, all of the arches, not acres, all of the arches will fall away. However, new arches are still being formed and will continue to form for thousands of years. So although we may lose some of our arch arches, um, the earth will just keep forming them. So technically we will never run out unless I guess some disaster occurs, but as of right now, the arches are, are staying. <laughs> the climate in the Arches National Park is considered a cold, semi-arid climate. And now we're going to get into the history, which is kind of the most interesting part about this park. So humans occupied the area of the park uh, since the last ice age, which was 10,000 years ago. Uh, Fremont people and ancestral Pueblo uh, Puebloans lived in the area until about 700 years ago. Spanish missionaries would encounter Ute and Paiute tribes in the area in 1775, but the first European Americans to attempt to settle were uh, the Mormon Elk Mountain Mission in 1855, but they would soon abandon the area and not settle down. Ranchers, farmers, and prospectors were later settled into uh, MOBA, which is in the Revere Valley, which is near the park, but definitely not like in the park. That would happen in 1870. Eventually, word would spread about the rock formations that were occurring there and how beautiful they were, and it made uh, the area became it. It would possibly become a tourist destination. The arches were first brought up to the National Park Service's attention by someone called Frank A. Wadley. He was a passenger traffic manager of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. Uh, Wadley and a photographer. Uh, George L. Beam would eventually visit the area in September 1923, 
after somebody called Alexander Ringer, Ringhofer uh, had written to them basically saying like, hey, this area has a ton of tourist potential. Um, you guys should come check it out. Uh, they would go check it out. Um, and this area that they brought him to, uh, he called the Devil's Garden, but to us is now known as the Klon Klondike Bluffs. Wadley was impressed by what he saw, and he eventually suggested to the Park Service director at the time, Stephen T. Mather, that the area uh, should be made a national monument. Eventually, more support for the area to be made a national monument came from somebody called Loris Gold, he was a University of Michigan graduate student who studied geology, uh, and he was eventually shown the area by someone called Dr. J. W. Williams. Eventually, government investigators would examine the area, however, they confused the precise location and found an area on the opposite side of the Salt Valley. Uh, this one included what is called the Landscape Arch, which is the longest arch in the park. Ringhofer's original discovery, so the one who first called, uh, uh, Wadley over and told them that it could be potentially become a tourist destination. His original discovery was omitted, um, so it was never really in the park at the time. However, a nearby area was included, which was known as uh, the Windows at the time. So designation of the area as a monument was supported by the National Park Service, but resisted by President Calvin Coolidge's Interior Secretary, Hubert Work. In April 1929, President Hubert Hoover would sign a presidential proclamation which would then create the Arches National Monument. Uh, the name Arches was suggested by someone called Frank Pinkley. He was the superintendent of the Park Service's Southwestern National Monuments after he visited the Windows section in 1925. In 1938, President Franklin D. Roosevelt would enlarge the area of the Arches. This was to add more scenic features and eventually permit the development of faculties or facilities to promote tourism. In 1960, President Dwight Eisenhower would make a small adjustment to that um, enlarged area and basically it was just to accommodate a new road. In 1969, President L uh, Lyndon B. Johnson would enlarge the arches yet again. However, two years later, President Nixon would make the area smaller but change the status from a national monument to a national park and then was formally dedicated in May 1972. Uh, and I believe that was when it officially became a national park. That's when it had its status changed. That was when it was technically now a national park. Um, that is the history of the national park, but there are some little facts. Uh, in 1980, vandals would attempt to use very abrasive kitchen cleaner to deface what is called an ancient petroglyph. Uh, this caused the park to recruit someone called John F. Asmus, who would then use lasers to restore the art. He would just basically sit there and blast uh, the petroglyphs with this laser, very bright, um, and eventually it did cause the abrasive kitchen cleaner to disappear, and it did save the petroglyphs. In 2016, another vandal would strike. Uh, they carved out a whole section of rock, but thankfully in 2018, the arch was repaired. Uh, through what is called color match and modern infilling methods. And that was about it for the history so far. Nothing else that I could see. Uh, we are going to get to uh, recreational activities that you can do in the park. So climbing anything like uh, the balanced rock or any named arch or unnamed arch in the park with an opening larger than three feet is banned. You're not allowed to do it. Climbing on other features in the park is allowed, but it is very strictly regulated. Um, slacklining and base jumping are completely banned park-wide. Climbing on the arches has been banned for a very long time following uh, someone called Dean Porter, who successfully free climbed uh, the Delicate Arch in May 2006. That made the park realize that they can't really enforce the rule of no climbing on the arches, so they had to, uh, they went back and they revised its regulations later, uh, later in that month they would eventually land on the current ban of arch climbing that is active uh, as of, like, I think 2014. So approved activities you can do in the park include auto touring, hiking, biking, camping at is what is called the Devil's Garden Campground, backpacking, cannoneering, and rock climbing. The last three activities, so the backpacking, cannoneering, and rock climbing require permits. You have to get a permit from the park service. Um, to go out and do those. If you don't know cannoneering, um, it is kind of like combining rock climbing, um, what is it? it? It combines a lot. It's like three things combined into one. 
Um, basically, they just explore canyons. It's kind of like that. Uh, guided commercial tours and ranger programs are available. And astronomy got very popular in the park due to the very dark skies that uh, are there. However, due to the light pollution increasing, uh, it has kind of gone down. The light pollution is increasing due to very nearby towns such as Moaba. Um, and that is as far as we know about the light pollution. Uh, if you don't know what happens, basically light pollution um, makes it so that you can't really see any stars. So astronomy is kind of getting lowered due to um, the increased light pollution. So plus publicity. How is the arches known? How did they get popular? Well, in 2014, the Delicate Arch became the third quarter in the 2014 American the Beautiful uh, quarter. <laughs> it actually became, I believe what I read, one of the most printed quarters. So it had like, I think 400 something printed. It was a lot. Um, and then, th here's another way it became popular. In 1956 to 1957, writer Edward Abbey would become a park ranger. He eventually kept journals and that would eventually lead to uh, the very popular book, Desert Solitaire. The success of this book would draw many hikers, mountain bikers, and off-payment driving enthusiasts to the park. Um, and even including uh, the Hayduke Trail, which is an 812-mile backpacking route, would eventually be named after one of Edward Abbey's characters, uh, and the route begins in the park. Now we're moving on to the plants and animals of the park. There are quite a bit, um, so we're going to get through that, and then the last section would be the features in the park, so what can you go see? So, some of the wildlife in the Arches Park include the Spadefoot Toad, antelope squirrels, scrub jays, peregrine falcons, many different kinds of sparrows, red foxes, desert bighorn sheep, kangaroo rats, mule deers, cougars, midget faded rattlesnake, yucca moth, western rattlesnake, and the collared, collared lizard. Some of the plant species you can find in the park include your prickly pear cactus, Indian rice grass, bunch grasses, uh, cheat grass, moss, liverwort, Utah juniper, Mormon tea, black brush, Cliff Rose, Four Winged Salt Bush, Pion Pine, Evening Primrose, San Verbena, Yucca, and Sacred Datura. Biological soil crust also exists. This consists of your cyanobacteria, uh, lichen, mosses, green algae, and microfungi, and most of this is found throughout western Utah. The growths in the biological soil create a layer that is more resistant to erosion and allows for more complex forms of plant life to grow in places with low precipitation. Now we get into the features. What exactly can you see at the park and what is the park known for? What can you really visit? So there are a ton. We're going to get through some of them and I'm going to tell you my favorite one because I laughed my ass off when I read this, but we're going to get started. So you have Balanced Rock, which is a very large balancing rock. Um, Courthouse Towers, which is a collection of tall stone columns. Dark Angel, which is a freestanding 150-foot sandstone pillar at the end of Devil's Garden Trail. Delicate Arch, which is a lone standing arch that has become a symbol of Utah. Devil's Garden, which has many arches and columns. Double Arch, which are two arches that share a common end. The Fiery Furnace, which is an area of maze-like narrow passages and tall rock columns. Landscape Arch, which is a very thin and long arch with a span of 290 feet. Petrified dunes, which are petrified remnants of dunes blown from the ancient lakes that cover the area. My fucking favorite one. I had to take a double take when I, re when I read this. It is called the phallus. If you do not know what a phallus is. <laughs> it is male genitalia. Uh, the phallus, which is a rock spire that resembles a phallus. Yep. Yep. Just look it up. Just look it up. <laughs> <laughs> just look it up but be careful look up if you're gonna look it up make sure you put arches national park because just just be careful you also have the wall arch which is located along the devil's garden trail however that one collapsed on august 4th or 5th it's not really known uh 2008 they also have the three gossips which is a mid-sized sandstone sandstone tower located in the courthouse towers area and that is all for the National Park of the Arches. Um, we have covered mostly everything, my favorite kind of stuff. <laughs> that is another desert one. I don't have a plan for the next one as of right now, but I do have a way I'll be picking it. I'm. We'll see where we go. It's kind of a gamble. I'm going to let somebody pick the park. 
Um, so I actually have no clue where we're going or where we might go. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, I will see you next time. And until our next adventure, may your trails be filled with wanderlust. And I will see you guys in the parks. Goodbye!